Hello, everyone. Thank you, Amanda. Um, it's so nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm Kaori Fukuyama, and I'm teaching Finding Light in Abstract Painting um, this spring, and I'm very excited. Um, I've met some of you already, but um, just want to tell a little bit about my background. I'm originally from Japan, and um, I have a pretty non-traditional back, um, art background. I don't have a fine art degree, and I started pretty late um, with my painting practice. And actually, Athenaeum was one of the schools that I took classes and met a lot of the wonderful artists. So I'm very excited to give back to my community and share what I've learned over the years. So let me start by asking you some questions today. Um, is anyone completely new to abstract painting? Making abstract painting? Nobody? I can't really see. Oh, some of you. Well, okay, half of you maybe. Um, have any of you felt sort of intimidated or nervous about abstraction? Yeah, understandable, totally understandable. So let me go over to my slides. Let's see, can you hear, uh, can you see this one? Okay, all right. So abstract art, um, I think I'm totally like, I totally understand how you feel about abstract art. Sometimes it can feel, you know, intimidating and I, I've taught similar class at different locations and I've noticed some of the students feeling a little bit nervous about abstraction. So I just wanna start by trying to alleviate your fear. Um, I think this fear comes from the way artists taught and also the lack thereof and the way art is shown at institutions like museums and galleries. They do their best to, you know, showcase the art and in their attempt to elevate artwork and the artist, sometimes that environment makes us feel sort of intimidated. So let me share this quote by Picasso. Everyone wants to understand art. Why not try to understand the song of a bird? People who try to explain pictures are usually barking up the wrong tree. And I really love this. I think that he's right. Um, you know, instead of trying to explain um, paintings with words or try to understand what it means, I think we should all take a moment to um, look at art and see what kind of feeling comes up, comes up for you. And that's a really good approach, I think, in terms of abstraction. Here's another quote by Robert Ginn, the late Canadian artist. Abstract understanding doesn't mean arbitrary sloshing and messing. Abstract art is controlled visual magic based on laws and methodology. Abstraction generally involves implication, suggestion, and mystery rather than obvious description. Like a good poem or perhaps a good piece of music as well, a good abstraction attacks your feelings before understanding, before you are understanding. And I think that's totally how I feel about abstract art. Um, this last sentence really hits home for me. Um, I had actually this very exact experience when I first um, so Mark Rothko's painting in person. And it was a very, very powerful experience. It almost felt like it completely bypassed all of my analytical brain and then hit really hard into my gut or like my heart. And that's a really, um, that's a feeling that you can create in successful painting. So personally, for me, I'm very drawn to light. And I think it comes from my upbringing and growing up in a small town of, of Japan where four seasons were really distinct. Um, I became very sensitive to light and became interested in how light affects the way we see and also the way we feel. Um, and then I spent many years trying to evoke various qualities of light in my paintings. So here are some examples. 
Um, this is called beacon number one. I try to create different qualities of light with subtle transitions of color and light. Of course, I use oils in my paintings, but in this class, we can definitely try um, similar ideas with acrylic. This one is called aperture number one. Um, in this one, I'm trying to create a space that viewers can enter into sort of emotionally. This one is called sound of stillness, um, has series of rings that ripples out. And it's a little bit hard to see on the screen, but in person, some viewers have told me that it starts to, after a while, it starts to move and vibrate. And that's a really cool technique that you can explore as well. And of course, this idea of expressing light in painting is not a new idea. Um, Dutch painters like Rembrandt or Vermeer have explored this in their figurative works. And British painter Turner, as well as French Impressionist Monet, they explored this idea in their landscape paintings as well. And here are some of the contemporary abstract examples that um, in our class, we will take a look at all of their works as well. So at this point, I like to do a quick exercise with you guys. Um, if you have a pen and paper and a charcoal or pencil, you can grab those materials and join us. So the first part of this is just drawing these <laughs> straight lines, making a rectangle and divide that rectangle into five sections. And this might be very, very basic for some of you. I know some of you are very good. Um, you don't need to, but if you have one handy, that's great too. It doesn't need to be a complete straight line. <laughs> and let me stop sharing this and move over to my video. Okay, can everyone see this? Okay. So this is an exercise in gradation and also value scale. So what I'm asking you to do is First paint, not paint, um, make the far right rectangle completely black or as dark as possible with your charcoal or pencil. I'm using here charcoal pencil. It's pretty effective in this exercise, I think. So that's done. Moving on to the next rectangle. But I'm not done. <laughs> Finish that up. Okay. Moving on to the next rectangle. So that will be the darker gray that's closest to the black. So I'm doing this by layering light grays, multiple light grays. I forgot to tell you this, but this exercise is two parts, two parter, which is the hard part, the easy part. Okay. 
moving on to the middle rectangle. So that will be the medium gray. Again, I'm just layering the light gray a few times to achieve that perfect medium gray. Moving on to the last rectangle, this will be the light gray. So it will be in between the medium gray and white. This is it for me. <laughs> Everyone pretty much done with this part? Pretty much? Anybody have any questions at this point? Simple. Okay, I will go back to my screen. Okay, so everybody's done with this value scale. Great, so keep that handy and then we'll move on to the second part. Um, I'm asking you to pull out another sheet of paper and first draw five, four vertical lines parallel to each other. And again, you don't need to use a ruler if you don't have them handy. One, two, three, four, pretty simple. And I after that, so four vertical lines dividing the sheet in five sections. Yep. And then after that, I'm asking you to create vertical, I mean, no, vertical, diagonal lines this time, intersecting those vertical lines. I think I've drawn about 15 diagonal lines, but you can do anywhere between 10 to 15. I'll wait for a few more seconds and then move on to the next part. So when that's done, pull up your value scale study that we just completed. And what I want you to do is fill each of these sections using one of the five values. Um, so some of them will be completely black, some of them will be completely white, so leave it white, and some of them will have 
either one of the three grays that you made, light gray, medium gray, and dark gray. And in this exercise, since if we're using grayscale, white will act as a light in your composition. So try to kind of distribute the darkness and lightness kind of throughout this piece. Do you mean each little diagonal square or rectangle needs to be a different color or do you carry it for the whole length of the diagonal? Each of them will have its own. Each it have can its own. be that, you know, like two next to each other can have the same ones or three. It's completely up to you. You are creating your own composition using these five shades. And I will stop sharing that and share my video where I started that process. You can this follow is, along. Oh. Is, this, is this a Cindy? Can I ask a question? Yes. Is this um, the sort of exercise, like, is this kind of the direction of, that the class will take? Like, you'll have exercises for us that are like this to follow? Definitely. I'll do a quick exercise in the beginning, something like this, but not exactly. Uh, we'll be using paint, of course, and we'll do this kind of a loose exercise to kind of start your your process and then after that you will finish a painting um, in a class or start a painting finished by the following class okay got it thank you mm -hmm. And what's different in the class um, is, of course, you, you will be making your own composition. So today I'm kind of um, making your life a little bit easier <laughs> and fast forwarding that process. But um, yeah, your painting will have your own composition based on the theme that I provide each week. And I'll go over that part in a little bit. What I'm kind of looking at is distributing light and dark throughout the whole sheet of paper so that your eyes will move around the entire canvas. So fun. And you can complete your own. <laughs> um, That's how far I've got, but <laughs> you can keep working on this for a little bit and I will stop in uh, maybe a few more minutes.
Okay, let me see. How's everyone? <laughs> Is it pretty much there? Yeah. Um, it's okay if you're not completely done, but is it, can I ask you to share some of your <laughs> creation? Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, wow. How cool. Very different from everyone's, this looks very different. Great. Awesome. Okay. Looks great. How was this exercise? Fun? <laughs> Not fun? <laughs> I found it a little bit frustrating because I oh. used different types of charcoal. Yeah. Different widths and densities. And then I used a 4B and a 2B pencil and I couldn't quite get the, um, the value that I wanted. Uh -huh. um, here, I'll show you. Okay. Probably gonna flake all over the place. I would have liked to have a I better, see. a better, um, lighter gray. Uh -huh. It kept coming out too dark. It looks great though. I think, um, you know, in class we'll use paint. So you'll have more control, I think. And Can we see that again? Could we see Denise's oh, again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't actually finish it completely, but that's okay. No, it's, it's, um, it looks oh, to yeah. me, your piece looks very expressive. <laughs> <laughs> because of the fact that you're not following um you know trying to fill between the lines right yeah it's more gestural that way i think Good. i like that yeah i'd rather okay. be more gestural <laughs> yeah that's where you're going for Good. um <laughs> so let me share my screen back um you'll have something like this at the end yeah and mm -hmm. This is black and white completely, but what do you think about this piece? Anybody have any feelings? <laughs> I, like oh, I love it. It's, it's, uh, it's very, um, it has an enthusiasm about it that I like. Oh, cool. Reminds me a lot of Bridget Riley. I don't know if that's her name, but she's an abstract artist. And yes. one of the things I really, love about her work and hello suzanne lena barbara and guys let me just tell you something oh nice hello, Susan. <laughs> hello. i'm sorry i'm hearing all kinds of like other background noise. me too <laughs> that, that was very weird anyway um so i guess i what i was trying to say well i'm sorry i'll turn my video on is that um it reminded me of bridget riley and one of the things i really love about it and maybe it's because i'm a neurologist and a neuroscientist is it really tackles like how our brain sees mm -hmm. and the way that so much of our sight is about contrast. So like immediately my eyes go to the white spot, the lightest yeah. and the darkest. And then mm -hmm. everything in between is like my brain is trying to figure out kind of where to rest. And uh -huh. so it's almost like she's whatever this, whoever this is, I don't know if it's you or her or whoever, but it's like she's actually trying to express the cognitive act of seeing itself, which is really oh, beautiful. I love that. I yeah. love your interpretation. And actually, this is <laughs> oh, a black and white version of Bridget Riley's painting. So I'll share you the original one. Oops. This one. And this has a lot of colors. How do you feel about this piece in colors? Anybody like this more or less or? Honestly, I kind of like the black and white more. That's yeah. cool. Interesting. I like this one more. It just, mm -hmm. um, the black and white, I didn't know where to rest. Mm. This one is easier for me. It's easier. Oh. I like it. I like the black and white better. I think it's more dramatic and has more uh -huh. feeling. Great. Interesting. So. All of that is great. <laughs> and I, I think for me, this color version has very playfulness in, in the use of colors. And for that, I like. Um, but black and white is as effective as this one. And for me, I don't know how you think about it, but for me, when I saw this, immediately I 
got excited. And then when I read the title Shadow Play, I thought of this. This is a, you know, scene in a forest with the sunlight fil filtering through. This is, um, komorebi is the Japanese word for that. And I really love this association I created with this piece. And maybe for you, it has a very different feeling. But for me, these vertical lines represented the trees. And then these shadows and the light were kind of playing with each other. So I really enjoy that. And that's the beauty also of abstract art that you can bring your own interpretation, your own association from your own experience. So I wanna talk a little bit about the goals for the class. We'll explore a different theme each week and the themes are listed on the right side. We'll explore various ways to create light within your painting. And I will introduce you to historical or contemporary artists who are relevant to the theme of the, of the week. And we'll do a quick demo and exercise just like we've done today to loosen you up before you start your own painting. And I'll introduce you to various ways of starting an abstract painting so you won't be staring at the blank canvas for too long. <laughs> And then I'll ask you to start a painting in class and then finish by the following class. So you have one whole week to um, kind of go through your process of painting a little bit, letting it sit, looking at the piece, and then maybe going back to it to improve your um, piece. I'll ask you to email me the image of the finished painting so I can review and prepare my you know, feedback for you. And the most important thing um, that I want to create in this class is an environment where we all feel safe to explore something new and share your opinions. And then also, you know, try, try something new and sometimes fail. That's also, I find it to be a very good way to learn. And failure is sometimes more um, important than a successful painting. <laughs> That'll teach you a lot. So don't be afraid to fail and have fun along the way. What will the dates of your class be? Um, let's see. It's starting, there you go. April 29th, Thursdays, 1 to 3.30 for five weeks. Any of you who are interested in joining us, I put the link directly to the class in the chat. Thank um, you. Or if you just want to go to our website, you can um, you can look it up there. So yeah, any see. other questions, yeah. comments? I have a question. This is Cindy again. Um, I don't really have a lot of experience painting with acrylics or oils. Is it still OK for me to join? It sounds sure. like a really fun Definitely. class. Definitely, um, especially with acrylics. It's a little bit easier to start, I think, for you. Um, if you have never done painting, have you done any other painting, like watercolor or? Watercolor and then oh, just great. like drawing, so. Yeah, definitely try acrylic for sure. Okay, okay. Great. Anybody else have any questions for me? No? <laughs> thank you everybody thanks for joining us yeah, thank you thank you thank you for the time thank you it's very informative thank you thanks yeah, Corey. that was great thank have you. a good weekend bye-bye you too thank you